Welcome back, Texas Patriot Off-Road and Outdoors. This afternoon, we're gonna be installing a generator inlet box. The reason we're gonna do that is gonna save a lot of time and effort running extension cords everywhere. It's gonna help power the house a little bit more efficiently and uh, just make things a whole lot easier after things like the aftermath of Hurricane Barrel, Burl, or whatever the hell his name was that just struck the uh, Texas coast this week. So stay tuned and watch what we do. So a generator inlet box is something like this. I got this off Amazon, it's about 30 bucks. This is a 50 amp inlet box. So this is gonna work on larger generators, probably eight or 10,000 kilowatts or higher. Uh, the generator I currently have is a 30 amp and we'll discuss that in a minute. But some of the things you're gonna need, obviously the inlet box, you're gonna need a generator cord, which this is another 50 amp cord that'll match that box. This end will go into your 50 amp generator uh, outlet. You're going to need some preferably six gauge wire to wire it into your uh, service panel, your breaker box. And since I don't have that large of a generator, I only have a 5,500 watt generator, 8250 peak. Uh, it only has a 30 amp outlet. So we have a four prong 30 amp twist lock right there and it's an adapter. So on the other end, there's your 50 amp female which I'd allow our generator cord to plug into. Uh, of course, I have a GE breaker box, so I've got a 50 amp breaker that I'm going to install. Uh, some other tools, a screwdriver, flat blade, some wire strippers, a multimeter, and a dummy light. Make sure everything's off on your meter, which of course we have no power right now, so that's not a problem either. But one of the other things I do not have here that's very important is an interlock safety device that will prevent you from turning this on if your generator is on so it prevents you from turning your generator circuit on while your main is on and the reason that's important and the reason you should not do that if you have generator power going through your system and your main breaker is on you will actually charge and could send current through the utility circuit and could shock or kill a lineman working on the pole who thinks that the power is out. And uh, we'll discuss that. I don't have that. I'm actually gonna make an interlock myself. Those are available for various breaker panels as well. And uh, they're available on Amazon. They're about 30 bucks, but I've got sheet metal. I'm gonna make my own. We are running a generator to run some things in a house, mainly our uh, refrigerators and deep freeze and one window unit air conditioner, but no lights or anything else. So. What that generator inlet box is going to do, it's gonna allow me to not have all these cords going to the house. And I'm going to be able to power or charge most of the circuits in my house, except for the large 220 circuits. So we'll have lighting everywhere and um, just make life a lot easier. Tiger. This is my 200 amp GE service. And I actually moved my AC 40 amp breaker that was in the top left up here. I actually moved it down because the interlock that I'm going to make is actually needs to be your generator breaker needs to be up top so that your physical device that you're using for an interlock, which again, mine's gonna be made out of sheet metal, is gonna prevent your 200 amp main from being on. You're gonna to have to turn that off like I just did in order to turn on your 50 amp generator breaker, okay? Um, and that's again, that's a big safety feature. I'm most likely going to mount the box somewhere in this area. You'll feed your wires back to your generator panel. We're going to take all this off and we'll go over that step by step. Probably be a lot of fast forwarding, but because I'm trying to get power on back in the house. Hold tight. Okay, I also want to stress that I am not an electrician. So any advice that you're seeing is just simply from me as an individual homeowner. Um, but anyway, this is circuits dead. There's no power to the smart meter um, But you have to make sure that, that all this is off So this is gonna be kind of what I'm doing here. So I've got the pot the box I've got some uh, three-quarter inch conduit from uh, Lowe's and I'm gonna disassemble this in a minute It's just sitting up here to show you what it's kind of gonna look like. I'm gonna feed the four strands of wire through here up into the breaker box 200 amp service and again my 50 amp breakers are going to be stationed right here um, so just kind of putting this together with uh like i say uh, items available at home depot or lowe's or any other regular hardware store and uh anyway so i'm going to start feeding the wire through and 
get this secured and we'll go from there all right that's it disassembled so this is the interior part of the box and it gives you some options on where you can feed through your your wiring through so i'm going through the bottom hole here just got a little scotch lock or whatever that holds that plug in place here's the plug and here's some of the items i'm using for the assembly um, got these locks and those are going to be for the metal adapter there's your three-quarter conduit these 90s uh, we've got a straight piece of conduit and anyway we're going to get it assembled but back to the breaker box so you got to decide where to install this i chose to do the one in the rear corner also because it'll fit the uh the metal adapter here and you have these knockouts throughout your breaker panel they're all on the back there as well big one on the side that way you, a lot of them have that there so you don't have to take and drill the holes out um, so again you got to choose the right size knockout for the job you're doing so we chose three quarter um, but yeah looking good folks another thing i want to talk about just to be in in all fairness this is the cheapest route uh, if you use that interlock system whether you buy it or make it yourself it's fairly safe for your family and of course for the utility workers the other more expensive alternative is what they call a transfer switch and it basically from my understanding involves another small breaker panel and it does it automatically i believe or possibly manually actually i believe it's both ways or you can get one that's automatic that detects power outage and it'll turn on kind of like your generax use and then there's a manual transfer switch and again that's kind of another breaker breaker panel that you're going to install uh, it's a little bit more complex and it is more expensive to do that and of course the automatic version would probably be even more expensive than a manual but um just wanted to throw that option out there as we're doing this so uh anyway food for thought we started fishing the war through these it's important that you do not assemble all this shit all together at once or you'll have a lot harder time running a wire through there, especially six gauge wire through three quarter conduit. And I could have went with a little bit larger conduit, but I wanted to try to keep it relatively clean looking. Um, of course you got your PVC glue and cement. We're gonna be kind of gluing this and assemble it as we go. Pro tip number one, make sure you prime, do your primer on your PVC or your conduit prior to running the wire through. That'll help make it a little easier. Like this, you know. See, I'm trying to get the primer. The wires are all in the way. But anyway, I've got everything else primed, ready for the glue now. And what not, assemble some PVC or some conduit like this here. It helps once you get the glue down before it dries to lay it flat, especially if you want it nice and square. All right, we're starting to feed our two legs of uh, power through. I've got my red and black, and I'm gonna put one in each end of the breaker here. You got a flat blade screwdriver that'll loosen the lug, and you loosen it up far enough so that your six gauge wire or whatever size wire you're working with will fit in there. And you strip your end like I did here. It's about mm, three eighths of an inch. You don't want too much strip back because uh, again, it's you want to have as much protection as you can and you'll put it inside that lug and tighten the hell out of it with your screwdriver once that's done i'm gonna install the breaker up top and it's as simple as it's gonna be a little hard with this but you're gonna lock it in on the left side on that section there where my finger's at and then you'll pop it into place right on the right side there. All right, we've got the breaker in place. Now we just have to get this wire tucked in so that when it's uh, when you put the cover on, you don't have to worry about it cutting the wire or anything like that. And this is heavy gauge, so it's a little bit tough to work with. But again, when you insert these breakers on a GE, you're gonna insert the outside first at an angle and then push the breaker downward onto the uh, locking tabs. All right, now that we've got our two legs of power, we're going to run a neutral into the ground bar. 
ground bars on the outside on either the right or the left. This one's full, looks like. So we're gonna run the neutral into one of these lugs and we're gonna run our bare copper ground into that as well, into one of those. And again, it's just a matter of fighting and fishing that shit in there and then tighten it up with your screwdriver. All right, pro tip number two, I forgot to mention, once you tighten your two lugs on your breaker, I like to take and hold the wires with my hand, hold the breaker with the other, and rock it back and forth several times and then come back and snug the lugs back up again. Over here on the ground bar, we've got our neutral white ran in here. And of course you tighten it there. Uh, I am gonna come back with a square bit just so I can get a little bit better bite on that because the flat blade's kind of wanting to slip out. And then we have our bare ground, which is here. I've just ran it up to one of the available locations and right there and tighten that up. So that's where we're at there. Uh, this wire is tough to work with because it's six gauge. I mentioned a minute ago, uh, I actually think I'm going to disconnect or loosen these, remove them and fish it back behind these other wires and come through that way. I think it's going to look cleaner, maybe a little bit safer, easier to install the cover. So that's where we're at so far. As I hate doing videos, again, I disconnected these. I hate doing videos without showing people everything. And I'm just trying to, a little bit of a rush because I'm trying to get our power back on. But anyway, so there's your little locking side here on the left. Uh, it'll be on the, go on the outside and then your tabs that you see there are going to connect right there where my two fingers are. And that's where you actually get your, your power from. So again, we're gonna just stick this thing in there rock it down make sure you're in the right and push and it kind of clicks into place but that's it there so again i'm going to reroute these behind these other wires come in and tighten the hell out of them all right folks we've got that wired up in the breaker box as we discussed earlier ran the wire up we're fixing to get the box mounted do a couple conduit clamps on there get that secure and then we're going to install the uh top plate with the outlet How's it dude it's the same all right so we got the box mounted we got the conduit clamped down now we're going to work on the back side of here it's as simple as plugging in your neutral which is the white and your two legs of power which is your black and your red then we have the ground the large ground for the outlet itself is going to tie into one of these lugs here and then our bare copper which is this one, we're gonna tie into the other lug. And after that's done, we're going to install the cover and hopefully this generator will run this uh, majority of the house. All right, here we are. We got them all connected back there. It's gonna be fun to try to get them in there. Gotta bend them in an S shape, get this secured, put the panel on and we'll be about done. All right, thank y'all for watching. This is a completed product. Got the panel back in place. Again, I've got all my large 220 volt appliances off. I have the range off. I have my relocated air conditioner breaker off. I've got the 220 water heater off and I've got the dryer off. That's labeled AC, but again, that's my breaker to this box. And I'm gonna do an interlock here shortly Today or tomorrow I'm off so that we cannot operate the main and this breaker at the same time because we do not want to hurt or kill a utility worker. It is imperative that this remains off while you have generator power. So everything inside the house, it's 110 volt, is operating. I've got two refrigerators, a mini fridge, and an outside freezer as well that's working. Uh, we're going to eliminate all these cords that are running everywhere. We're going to have our fans working and one portable AC unit. Thanks for watching Texas Patriot Off-Road and Outdoors.